Here's a brief overview about what a Pi Cart is. Essentially, it is a Raspberry Pi mini computer inside a Nintendo NES cartridge. Makes for a unique gift. I give them to friends and family. They really enjoy them. Uh, what sets mine apart is I add an LED indicator and a an power switch. As you can see, it's got HDMI, USB, and power connector. You can plug USB controllers into the USB ports to play your games. This is what the main screen looks like. There are different options and skins. This is the one that I chose. There are mini games available. As you can see, you can put, you basically it's an emulator, so you can emulate any of the old school retro game. And it does have a little add a little more versatility and functionality. Playing the games is great. It, they're pretty much the same as when you played them as a kid. And there's just a lot of options to choose from. There are so many games that I have not even played them all yet. But again, these make great gifts. They're a lot of fun. Pretty easy to make. You don't have to put the LED light and power switch in. Uh, I do that just because it does make it easier for people. Um, you know, when they look at it as a gaming system, they want to be able to know when it's on, be able to remember to turn it off. Um, and that switch and power LED really helped to help them out with that. Let's start with what you'll need. First, you'll need a NES cartridge. Uh, this one is an official NES licensed cartridge. Uh, does require a special screwdriver to get this open. Uh, as you can see, I already removed the label. All right, so we have our Raspberry Pi Zero heat sink for the Raspberry Pi, 16 gig um, Class 10 Ultra SD micro SD card, uh, HDMI to mini HDMI, and, and a USB OTG charger hub. Uh, make sure it has the OS OTG option. All the links will be in the description below. And the charging cable for the Raspberry Pi. You'll also need an LED. This one is a 12 volt LED. Some wire. And you'll need a momentary switch. Uh, I got these uh, on Amazon. I'll links in the description below. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, like I said, we have a special screwdriver for opening the officially licensed NES cartridges. But do not lose your screws. Uh, yep, don't know what to do with this. I don't use them once I take them out of the cartridge. And this is the 3D printed chassis. Uh, you can find these online. I happen to have a 3D printer. And we're gonna go ahead and remove this section here. These sections there. And these little tabs here have to be removed, but do not break the screw mounts. Uh, that could be a problem. I have done that. Um, sometimes some of these older cartridges are fragile. And there, as you can see, fits in nicely. Here you can see I printed a sticker. Um, this I use as a, just a reference for making the air vent holes. I, I do this because the Raspberry Pis, even though they don't technically need it, uh, I find it's better for a little bit of airflow. They do kind of get warm. People tend to play them for quite a while. Uh, I use a lighter to heat up a really sharp screw so that I just kind of poke a hole to get it started before I drilling. Uh, kind of monotonous little process, but uh, luckily I sped it up. Here I grab the larger drill bit and by hand all I'm doing is just removing the 
excess waste that comes through when you drill, um, basically de deburring the holes. Not much pressure at all. They're pretty sharp drill bits. I just do it enough to just remove the excess plastic that's sticking out. Uh, we're going to go ahead and test fit everything in here. And nice little fit. I'm going to grab some electrical tape and just kind of hold it down, keep it in place. So I just get a small drill bit. I slowly and precisely hand twist the drill bit until it finally makes it all the way through. At which point I will be able to test the switch and make sure that the switch is able to fit in without any issues. Alright, looks like it will finally fit just fine. And it clicks. Here I'm putting solder on the tips of the switch on the pins and going ahead and attaching the two wires to the switch. Let's go ahead and add some heat shrink. Putting the switch in place, there's the hole we drilled earlier. Making sure everything looks good, test fit. Hold the tape in there to keep the switch in place while we grab the hot glue. Put a generous amount of hot glue on there. And now we're going to go ahead and get the LED ready. I do bend the LED over, it makes it easier to fit into there. Just be careful not to uh, break it. Uh, I, I do test it before I go ahead and glue it in. Go ahead and drill your hole for your LED. And get your LED in there. Again, some tape and it'll hold it in place. And again, another generous amount of hot glue. And once it dries, go ahead and pull your tape off. And there's your LED and your switch. And just to make sure nothing happened with the LED in the process of gluing down, I go ahead and test it again. Alright, and it looks like it's time we're going to start wiring the pie. Uh, again, the helping hands, go ahead. Here I am applying flux to the four pins, that I'm, or the four uh, spots where I'm going to be soldering the wires to. Those two spots you saw there, those are where the switch, the momentary switch connects. You see I almost fill the holes with a little bit of the flux. Kind of sucks the solder into the connection and there's that was the power for the LED and this is the negative for the LED. I'm looking for my tweezers. Okay, so get the tweezers in there. And I just kind of put the cable down there and I already, you can see I already, I already uh, stripped the tips of the cable. And go ahead and lock that in there and let's do the next one. Again, these are the two LED, or the two wires for the momentary switch. Again, the black cable is the power. I went ahead and tinned the tip real quick before I applied any more uh, solder to there. Uh, this tip's getting kind of bad. I kind of wish I had one of my... Uh... Just make sure you clean off your soldering. And here's the negative. And that's it. Literally just a touch. And we'll go ahead and remove everything. Time for assembly. Make sure you get your SD card in there. You can take it out and just pull up a little bit on the chassis and it'll 
kind of come out. As you see, we didn't glue the chassis in or anything. Pretty much everything is replaceable uh, with a little work. Um, this one only has one screw in it. I actually I ran out of screws, so I got to find another one. But just for video's sake, uh, go ahead and put it together. Everything snaps back in. And that's it. And next we'll be uh, making the label. We're almost done. All we need to do is go in and enable the options for the LED power light to work properly. Uh, as you can see when you first start it up, the LED light will come on and then go off. Uh, something I forgot to mention during the part of this tutorial and I will try to mention that at the beginning before anybody actually gets started. So here we go. Uh, go ahead and load up your Raspberry Pi. Then you're going to want to go to the configuration settings and you're going to want to look for Raspberry Config. Once in Raspberry Config, you're going to want to go down to interface options hit right to select, B to enter, then you're going to want to go down to F6 and we want to turn that on so we're enabling, then we want to go back to interface options again, again that's right and then B for select and we're going to go down to the GPIO settings, the very last setting, go ahead and select and click yes on that again, click OK and now we're going to go right and if you go right twice you can go to finish press B to finish and that'll bring you back to emulation station once in emulation station go ahead and press start go down to quit and then we're gonna go down to shut down or I'm sorry restart and then yes and then once your system boots up you will see that your LED light is now powered on and I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the process of this video just for show As you can see, you can now see the LED light does stay on while the system is powered up. And again, I sped this up. And here we go. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.